This is Plus Politics. The Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, the ICPC, and the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, OAGF, have begun investigation and audit of state government agencies and personnel who spent the COVID-19 funds from the government and private individuals. The ICPC noted that it was investigating alleged cases of corruption in the management of COVID-19 funds and palliatives, including some state governments in the country. And joining us to discuss this this evening is the Executive Director of CERAP, Mr. Tokumbo Momuni, via phone. Thank you, Mr. Tokumbo, for joining us. It's a pleasure speaking with you. An ongoing investigation and audit of state government agencies and personnel who were said to have spent the COVID-19 funds from the government and private individuals. What is going on here? <laughs> Hello? Yes, Mr. Mumuni, go ahead. I can hear you. Yes. What we are we are sought for at the beginning of the spending on COVID-19 is that there has to be transparency and accountability so that people who are given government money do not get to misappropriate and embezzle the money while we say we are we are fighting COVID-19. So what the Auditor General and the IGP said they will do now is in line with the call of Fela that this government has to be careful in the way and manner public funds are expended so that there will be transparency and accountability. Now, prior, prior to now, Mr. Mumuni, Nigerians have expressed their doubt about the, the government possibly using the COVID-19 intervention fund and, and donations as a means to enrich themselves. How do you react to this, to this um, what, what being tossed around in the street by most Nigerians? You see, it is good when, when people make claims. They should be able to back it with... with statistics and factual evidential proof. That is what is important. So when people make allegations, it must be submitted to forensic scrutiny so that the truth of the matter will be known, so that the truth shall all set all of us free. Now, what do you think largely is contributing to, to all of these, given, given the, the federal government asking the ICPC to go into probes of the possibility of these allegations and corruptions for, for the COVID-19 funds and palliatives? Would you say it's a, a case of whistleblowing or specificity by, by what is going on? Uh, when, 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 when citizens raise issues, a responsible government must be able to go further down, do forensic analysis of the issues submitted by the members of the public so that the truth will be known. I think that is what has made the government ask to ask ICPC to move in to look into the matter more clearly and with detailed scrutiny. That is what our presidency is all about. That is what accountability is all about. And, and would you say that the, gov the, the federal government has conducted itself well, I mean, when it comes to, to, to monitoring and specifically when it comes to accountability, the process of accountability and the guideline, could, couldn't it all be a reason for this level of corruption? Is that what? Now, the, I'm saying, is the, is, the, is the government blameless in all of this going on? You know, when you think about the lack of monitoring and specific accountability process in place and the guidelines, yes. couldn't all this be a reason for this level of corruption? Good. What we see is that when the government says we want to be transparent and accountable, we have not seen clearly steps taken by the government in line with those principles. 
I think what we have now seen that ICPC and the Auditor the, the, the General wants to do would be a step towards accountability and transparency. And that is very, very important. Because in the democracy, you cannot be spending people's money by guy without giving them to the, to the sincere aspiration of the people. So what this government is now doing is to me walking the talk deliberately, consciously, and more importantly, in accordance with the principle of transparency and accountability. Now, as the executive director of SERA, Mr. Mumini, uh, what, what yes. is your collaboration with other civil society groups as it affects um, these funds, these unaccounted funds? What is your role right now with other civil society groups like um, other agencies like the ICPC? You see, we will, we will monitor and the other civil society groups are ready to monitor and scrutinize what the ICPC will do about what we have on our hands. So that if the ICPC say we are investigating, we will expect that the outcome of the investigation should be made known to the Nigerian people. And whoever is found and in gloves in the mismanagement of Nigerian people, people of Nigerian money is brought to justice. Our organization and some other civil society organizations are ready to ensure this. Now, we've had cases where allegations are made, probes are made, panels are set up, investigations are gone into, but we never get names of these perpetrators mentioned or listed in any, in any ways. Now, what would you expect differently from the ICPC in the line of these investigations, ongoing investigations? Good. ICPC will not just investigate. ICPC has to give us specifics in terms of names, in terms of funds actually mismanaged. And ICPC must be ready to prosecute whoever evidence of corruption is found against. Now, in, in the cases of diversion of COVID-19 logistics and contingency emergency fraud into personal account, as stated by the ICPC Director of Operations, Mr. Akim Lawal, shouldn't yes. there be mention of names or states at this point in time, even while the investigation is still ongoing? Uh, no, it, it, it is better that until the investigation is completed and until we have provable evidence against those that perpetrated it, it will not be fair to start mentioning names when investigations are still going on. I think people in the ICPC are lawyers and they, are, they must be aware of, the, of what the law about defamation is about. I think that is the, what they are trying to guard against. Now, in your capacity as the executive director of CERAP, over the years, um, you've called for accountability in so many ways from the Nigerian government and public office holders. But we see a, a, a culture of impunity where most times these calls are made, but nothing is done. Nobody, nobody is sued, nobody is prosecuted, and the case is swept under the rug. What yeah. should be done here differently, Mr. Mr. Mumuni? Now that we now that people have called a great allegation and the ICPC says we are investigating, we must be patient to wait for the outcome of their investigation. We will need specifics in terms of names, in terms of sums. That is what investigation is about. It is not enough that you investigate. You must give us the details of your investigation. I remember that in 2007, Sarah wrote a petition about the Universal Basic Education Fund. 
It was investigated by ICPC. And they gave us the full report of that investigation. That is the way investigation must go. And that was how we were able to file a, a case against the federal government relating to the Uber fund. And we know where we are now on the Uber fund. We will be ready to monitor and scrutinize the ICPC in the discharge of its work. Lastly, Mr. Mumuni, in the, in the light of all of the allegations going on and the, and the probe ongoing and investigations, what comprehensive framework should be employed now for the effective management of COVID-19 funds under the Treasury Street single account, the TSA? You see, we know that the government is trying to clean up its act, but the government must do it clearly, openly, transparently. That is what we expect from the government. So that whatever, whatever fund is assigned or is supposed to be spent on COVID-19 will be treated with due care. And people assigned to do that work must be up and doing and above board, like Caesar's wife. Executive Director Sarah, Mr. Adetokumo Mumuni, thank you very much for joining us on Plus Politics and for your contribution. It's a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take our Plus report now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. We are reporting from Ikata Roundabout, Lekki, Lagos, Nigeria. We bring to you if people really know what coronavirus entails. Do they believe in it or not? If you're talking about if it's real or not, it's definitely real because the whole world will not shut down if something like that is actually not um, available. The truth is just that this coronavirus is not real. Coronavirus is real. Whoever says it's not real is lying. It's just a joke. Coronavirus is real. And... Um, Everybody should be aware of that. And for the other ones that understand the severity of the virus, what safety measures do they practice? Well, as you can see, not very much because I'm not wearing my face masks. But I think we should, we should take uh, more serious steps. It depends on our individual uh, differences. Because if you fear the government will do anything for you. You are joking. No, no. I come from Maja every day, and then uh, what I see, you see thousands of people gathered in one spot like that. About 200 are with face masks, many 800 are just walking freely. So I think no. Moreover, some believe that the government is not being truthful about the pandemic and the number of cases as well. To be sincere with each other, this kind is just, it's just fraud. Imagine, if truly that these people care about us, that Corona do kill. Is it only Corona that can kill? We've survived Corona for two or three months, we did not die. Many people, what of hunger? Can anybody survive hunger for two months or three months? Would everybody die? This thing is more, if they do care about us, why do they not care about what we are going to be eating? For me, oh, I feel like they are making, they are using it to make money. And we, why we the less privileged, we are suffering. Isolation centers have been seen in Lagos. They are not, they are, people are not filled up like that in the isolation centers. The number of people they keep on posting every day, I don't think it's up to that amount, you understand? Because like, I, I, I can, if I'm positive, I think in, in Lagos it's about 2,000 something. And I've asked around, I'm yet to see one person who has, or who knows someone who has the virus. My advice to, to the government is that they should come out and tell us the truth. Bume Francis of Lost TV Africa. This is my take. Over the years, Nigeria has been desirous of a credible voting system due to the irregularities that has hampered and characterized previous elections, which include ballots, stuffing, intimidation of voters, hijacking of ballot boxes, violence, and manipulation of election results. 
Hence, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, introduced direct data capture machine technology in 2007, which produced the electronic voters register and smart card readers, which has since been used for all elections. Though the introduction of the electronic voters register and smart card readers improved the electoral process, but in my opinion, that is yet to achieve the desired results. With a new e-voting system in Nigeria, it is imperative for us to analyze the possible barriers to its full implementation as well as way forward. I want to believe that the full implementation of e-voting system in Nigeria could and will save the country from the awful experiences of the past as it promises free, fair, transparent, convenient and confidential elections as well as the speedy processing of results. Most importantly, if fully implemented, Electronic voting could be the master stroke we've been looking for in that it means we now finally have the means to vote the right individuals and have qualitative representations. And since the outbreak of the coronavirus, a lot of money has been donated and raised in Nigeria to fight and curtail the spread of the virus. Earlier, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, announced that it has set out a number of measures to tackle the impact of coronavirus, including establishing a fund of 50 billion naira to support the country's economy targeted at households and micro and small enterprises. The federal government also and states have been approving and doling out billions of naira for the fight of COVID-19 too. Interestingly, the private sector is also in a game of donating huge funds. But the question remains, how judicious is a fund deployed to address the problem for which it was donated amid increasing suffering in the land following the lockdown? The government also claims to have spent billions so far in the fight, but where are the evidences? Sadly, billions were spent on the relief materials for the lockdown, but the materials did not get to the people who truly need them. So, one is right to ask if their claimed huge sum was truly spent on the procurement of the relief materials, or if the funds were diverted into private pockets. Obviously, there is so much money out there for COVID-19, but there seems to be less impact, implying that something may be happening to the fund against its original purpose. The ongoing probe instituted by the federal government, anti-graft agency, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, the ICPC, and the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation is indeed finding light in the darkness. Nigerians are asking questions over the use of the huge donations towards the fight against COVID-19 because they've seen situations where individuals became richer overnight by virtue of handling distribution of relief materials. If people can divert food and pharmaceutical supplies meant for the internally displaced persons, the IDPs, there is no limit to what they can do. To this end, I will suggest that the findings from the investigations and audit of state government agencies and personnel who spent the COVID-19 funds from the government and private individuals should be made public and all the names involved mentioned without fear or favor. And that's our show for tonight. Thank you for staying with us. Plus Politics returns same time tomorrow. Until then, stay safe and be well.